Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to continue working on this little micro mini horse and we're gonna work on shading first. Although I don't like using washes for too much, I am going to discuss washes here and I picked out an umber wash for the color I'm doing. However, if a black horse, you may wanna use a blue wash or a purple wash or a lighter wash for different colors. And with the washes, I would just recommend using that if there's a lot of um, deep crevices. So this would be just for the mane and tail and probably for the little feathers down here. So with a little wash on the brush, just gonna go over and it's gonna get in to the crevices. Now that wash will just be um, to get into the details of the mane and tail, and that'll be finished later, the mane and tail. So now we're gonna look at the body. So there's two ways of painting your shade, your shadow, and your highlights. The first is a glaze where you take a watered down paint and then you're just going to, knowing where your shadow is on here, just lightly paint that on. And you're gonna do that in layers. You gotta let it fully dry. I'm gonna get into any of these little crevices and you're gonna hardly see any notice. You should hardly see this. And once that's dry, you're gonna do it again on top of it. So as you work out, you may go this far the first time and then this far and then this far. So you're gonna build up the shade in the areas that you want it. The other way is to wet blend it, where you use a heavier amount of paint and you put one color here and another color there, and then you scribble between it, blending it. But for now, I am going to work on the wash technique. And that is what this picture is here for, to see where you're gonna put your darker colors. And each time you build it up, the color will look a little bit darker. I am not gonna work under any areas that are gonna be white. Now, if you find you've gone too far, just bring along some of your original color and blend that in while it's still wet. See, I'm slowly building up. Oh, it's a little much there and blend into it. Just slowly working in little bit by little bit working between a wet blending and a wash. The idea is to get everything nice and smooth. You don't want stark lines. And the muscles, you're gonna be underneath the muscles and later we're gonna go on top of it with a lighter color. I prefer to work the shade first. Now looking at the picture of your real horse, make sure you get plenty of detail around the face with the lighter, the first wash, the first few washes. Get all that nice little detail and really pop out his face. One thing I see in a lot of paintings is, well, the chestnut, the muzzle should be a grayish color, but I find people tend to make gray up to here and then not. So what you need to do is blend that gray. It blends into the brown. It doesn't, it's not a stark line here or a stark line around the eyes. You're just keeping picking at it with water and paint and build up your color slowly. Now, as you work, stop and take a photograph of it. And then you can see it much bigger and see how it looks in photographs. So you can see here, as I've been talking, I built up a little too much dark here. By putting it into photographs, you can see what it looks like much better. Now, once you have a few layers of shadow on, you may wanna start a little bit of your highlights. And again, just very lightly watered down in the areas where your highlights are. And start building that up. 
And these will take a little bit more to build up. Let that dry and keep going back and forth between them. Now as you build up, you're gonna have a wider zone of the lighter one and as you get narrower and narrower at each level until there's just a very light line. See, building up here, I put some of this lighter on and then worked the original color back in, in the middle with the, with some wet blending, just so I can smooth it out. And I will build that up again by adding a little more on top. And as I need it, I can blend in more of the original color. And just keep going back and forth between the three colors. Now you may want to add some more red into that or some gold or whatever. Now here is a nice trick to use. As you get to the higher levels, take some metallic gold and mix that in with your highlight. And that'll give it a bit more sheen, depending of course on your color. But you can use metallic paints to bring them out more. Using a dry brush, We'll also, so you put the color on with one brush and then take this second brush to dry brush. It can help spread your color nicer as well. The whole thing is to try to get it as smooth as possible. So here I'm going to apply the color and then with the dryer brush, I'm going to smooth it out. I've been going back and forth between glazing and wet blending, and I'm finding him a little dull. So what I've done is taken some red and mixed it in to my regular paint, and then I'm going to just basically dry most of it off the brush. And I'm going to dry brush a little bit of brighter colors on top of them. And this dry, dry brush technique is excellent. Now, if you work between the three going back and forth, that is how you finally build up your piece. For areas where you want a straight line, such as along a muscle, take a few pre-brush strokes to get your line straight before actually doing a nice straight line on it. Adding a little gold to the red, you can really see the difference that paint does. Gold really pops out the color. Now I've been working more on the other side so I'm just going to show you the difference in that and then I'm going to blend that in better but and that's what these second brushes help with. Working between the different colors back and forth. Once I have it I'm dry brushing with a larger brush just to lighten him up just a little bit and when you dry brush it just picks up the top, it doesn't get into the places where shadows should be. I'm just giving them a little overall lighten. Once you're fairly happy with your color, now I haven't even started the mane and tail, I'm going to take my lightest color for the highlights and add a tiny bit of white, not much, and a little bit of gold and dry brush on the final little top highlights. These are just the very, very top ones to pop out the very tips of the muscles. Again, I'm not working much down here. I have the tail color that I was gonna do, but I've been mixing up colors just back and forth. And what I'm doing is trying them on his tail, see what they look like and if I like them. And I figured I'm gonna have a tail starting here about the same color as the horse and then lighter at the bottom and I'm going to put another layer of wash over it once I'm done. Same for the mane. Remember the underside of the horse's tail should stay gray. As a horse's tail isn't dark and then a line and then light, this is where you need to do your blending between the two different colors so it blends slowly from dark into light. The mane, I'm just dry brushing it 
And as I get up to near the tips, I'm getting lighter and lighter. When you're tipping the tail and the mane, remember the longer the hair is, just like in people's hair, that is sunburnt and that's why it's lighter. So it doesn't grow out lighter and then go darker. It grows out darker and then gets lighter with sun. The tips are also more yellowy because the sun removes red from hair. It leaves more of a blonde color. At this point, I'm still not finished with them, but I'm gonna start the white markings and see how that looks and make any more adjustments once those are on. So I'm gonna mix up my whites and we're not using pure white. Remember the other video, I'm gonna check my papers I printed out and we have the white markings, which is mainly white, but there's a little bit of yellow and red in there as well. Once you've mixed your white, try a little bit on there and make sure it doesn't stand out too much and it looks like a nice white marking. A little bit more red and yellow to that. Try it again. And once you have it right, we're gonna block in the white markings. The nice thing about white markings is they can also cover mistakes. Now, when you do your white markings the first time, if I want it up here, I'm only gonna to go to there because later I'm gonna dry brush up that way. So this is just a block in. So this is gonna go higher. This is just how I want it. And you can design any kind of markings that are realistic for the breed. If you don't know, look online and you can get all sorts of interesting pictures of real horses. Make sure when you're putting on your first coat that it's fairly thin. You're gonna build up your white markings as you go. Now, once you've got the basic blocking done, you can build those colors up by going in the direction of the hair and fairly thin paint. The first thing we're gonna do is just build up the general area of it before we start putting the roning in there. Now looking at a Sabino horse, you can see all the roning in different spots and how it blends up through and where all the markings are. We're gonna work on that next. The white paint and a dry brush, we're going to map out in the direction of the hair, and I'll leave something in the uh, description about hair direction. Just dry brush wherever you want the roaning look to be. And with the legs, you're gonna bring that up, dry brush upwards, and note that leg markings don't go all the way around uh, line. They're all over the place jagged. Again, look at some real horses to see that. Just gonna bring that roaning up, or mapping, we call that. When we're brought dry brushing, we're just using tiny little pats in the direction of the hair. If you find you're getting too much white, you can add back some of the regular color in there as well. Now a Sabino horse usually has a lot of white on its face. But remember, you have to go in the direction of the hair. And usually if the white goes around where the eye is, then we're gonna have a blue eye. Not always, but a lot of times. So how do I know when he's done? What you need to do is take a photograph of him. And you realize when I photograph him, this is really way too rough. So I'm gonna work on that more. Try to smooth that out more. And then I'm gonna take another photograph because I find it much easier. One of the important things about white markings is doing a lot of thin layers to build up the white. And once you've got that, if you want to mute out some, if you find some of these are a little rough, you can stipple with body color or with white, just tiny little stipples to clean up the edge to kind of make that look more like a real marking. And again, look online, get pictures of real horses to get the look. But this kind of pinto has a lot of stippling in it. And here I've got a broken part of a brown come in there. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit more, a little more stippling, a little more white, just to get the uh, stuff right. And then I'm going to go in with the shading color of white 
and with a very fine brush, I'm going to shade the white. Now when you're shading the whites, you're gonna get into little places like that, under the hawks, and also around his crotch area should be darker. I have a gray color. Places under the arms and around the nose, there's white. Shade with a more pink. Especially on the end of his nose, it's kind of sunburned. Just a subtle pink on the white around the nose. For the eyes, I'm gonna take a little bit of black paint on a five by zero brush, just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to get paint just inside the eye. And I'm gonna do that off camera because I don't think I can do it while talking. And I'm gonna do that on both, even though this is gonna be a blue eye. I'll probably shade around this eye gray as well. Next, I've taken some brown and mixed it with a fair bit of gold. And then I'm going to just right in the eye, just a little round spot right there. And I'm gonna take a little spot of the color I use for the markings. And with this horse, he's looking down. So I'm gonna take a little white dot at the back to show the white of his eyes. Now you may wanna use a toothpick for that. A tiny little horizontal line, if you can, middle of the eye. Again, I find this five zero brush the best, finishes off the eye. A little black inside the nostrils, if they're not already black. The blue eye, I mixed a little royal blue and white. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the brown and gold on this side. For a white legged hoof, the hoof should be a browny, sandy pink color, and you can see that online for a real horse. First, I'm just gonna base them with that sandy color. Once your hooves are base coated, you can put some vertical stripes or horizontal stripes around the hooves. And again, look at real horses to see what they would look like. As this guy isn't a standing mold, I want to put him on a base. And I will put a link down below where I got these bases from. I'm going to use this one. It's a little bigger than what I'd want, but it's going to work. So first, I washed it. And now I'm going to use some modeling paste on this. And you can use dirt uh, pastes or whatever you want, just to build a little texture and make it to look like dirt. Just a sim simple stippling will give it a good dirt look. And it sounds like we have a sound check for the big concert tonight. Well, I'm not gonna be able to do much videoing, but I'm just gonna work that and let it dry. If you don't want peaks, you can just work it without the brush to reduce the amount of peaks that you're getting and just give it a little bit of rough texture. You can also grab another model and add hoof prints as well. For the base, I'm just going to use some of this leftover paint, mush it into a brown, stipple it on, and then I'm going to use a lighter one to go over it and dry brush it. By just going on the old paint, and I'm just going anywhere, I'm just getting mixes and matches of different colors. As I'm going to pin him, I've also primed the pin, because I'm going to use the same pin. Now I'm just dry brushing the base with a light color. Once you're done, you can keep the color around the edge or put a nice black rim around their frame, depending on what you want. For the pin, you can paint that any color you'd like that you find is gonna blend best with your background for photography. That's up to you. And once you've done that, give him an overall coat of a gloss finish. Um, you can either use a spray or a, a spray on or a brush on. And then after that's dry, apply a matte coat on top of that. The gloss coat will give him a better finish, harder, more durable, and then the matte will bring it back down to the, just a nice light sheen. 
that you'd expect on a horse. Now, I would show you the products, but I don't have them. I cannot get a, a dull coat or anything like that here, and that's what I would like to use. Now, to finish them off, I'm just gonna hold on to the bottom of the pin and twist that until the pin comes out. Then determine where you want him to sit on the stand. With your drill, make a hole. Determine the height you want him. Then trim off any extra metal underneath on the pin. And with some crazy glue, glue in the pin. And I bent the pin underneath as well.